Oh, welcome everyone. It's Vanessa and that's Morgan and we are your co-walkers today for the last Sisterhood Saturday walk and talk of the summer. It's been an absolute pleasure and a joy um, to spend the first Saturday of each month walking with you all. It was just an informal way for us to honestly connect back with the movement to open up the mics and hear some stories and to set some intentions over the month. And Morgan, I felt um, really grateful that I was going to get to walk and talk with you today. Oh, that's great. I'm glad you're catching your breath. And I know you made 15 people or 1,500 people, however <laughs> many people on the line, lose their breath like, oh, my God, there's something going on. <laughs> it's like, let me, but you have to be proud of me. I was, I was, I was, I heard you. I knew seconds. it. No, I knew it, Morgan. That's what I'm saying. I knew it. I didn't know it was 30 seconds, but I'm sorry, y'all. No, it's, it's also the most spectacularly beautiful day in Washington, D.C. It looks picturesque and it feels like that song, Feeling Good. Like, it just feels yeah. and looks like that. It feels like Josephine Baker might come around the corner. And I already went on my walk. And now I have my shoes off with my feet in the sun. And it feels so good. <laughs> yeah. It feels good here, too. It was that um, yeah. that hurricane that came through, cleared up all that. Yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> it's all breezy. The birds are surfing here. It's great. I'm feeling so good. I'm feeling so good. I'm going to a football game later today. I'm going to get my Charlie girl, my dog tonight. I haven't, I haven't seen her, spent time with her in years since I moved to Africa. So I'm going to get her tonight. I'm just feeling good, V. Um, I'm feeling good too. <laughs> look, feeling good. It's, um, you know how I always say September is the a start of the new year which it's not but I love September but it is the start of the optimal season I was reading all up about it last night and it's like <laughs> it's, it's the a start new... of your life it's your birthday yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and also autumn is special it just seems like a special time to... I always felt like I felt excited about autumn because it was not just my birthday but it was like back to school time. So I always felt really excited to like connect with my people. It felt like you had new school clothes. So if you did, thank God for the resources, but it felt like you could put some new clothes on and then just start fresh, just like whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I'm about to be in this grade, but I'm gonna try some stuff out. Like I just always felt like this season was just so, and then, you know, if you celebrate Halloween, it's like put on a costume. I'm just saying the whole season is basically just inviting us to just have some fun, try some things out. I've always felt like that energy and I was reading about it last night but I'm so excited yeah. for you to go get Charlie Morgan I heard um thank you I heard Chris in Detroit say that she was walking and she was doing a live on Facebook and I happened to be walking so I tapped into her live and she was saying something very similar she was saying that things are dying back now from the summer Ooh, um, and that, that new things are back. taking root yeah and she was like what in your life do you need to let lay dormant you need to let uh, uh, kind of die back. And I was like, and, and then kind of what you're saying is exactly right. Like, what do you want to start to begin to take root in your life? And then there was, I heard another trekker, Althea, down in Atlanta, who I think she's in like Tibet or something. She was, <laughs> she was I don't know where she is, somewhere fabulous, Bali. Oh, yeah, but Peru or something um, like that, yeah. Oh, she might be in Peru, yeah. she had, I saw her with some holy people, and, you know, she had some, like, ancient ritual stuff, and she, I was like, girl, you better live your life. But she was telling us that uh, on her Instagram that the full moon two nights ago was one yes. of absolute trans transition and new beginnings. So I yeah. think you're right about this, like new, this energy, like y'all, I had a reset of my whole life, like two days ago. I just decided. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, yeah that ain't working. <laughs> I was like, that ain't working. I'm going to try something new. I erased all my text messages. I erased all, all the arguments. I erased all the, the expectation. I just erased everything. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to start over. Just like a new school year. Just like a new school yeah. year, like what you were talking about. I used to change my name every year. Uh, and that exactly. might be a mental I would change my that might be a mental <laughs> <laughs> I know it is oh my god we're serious okay that's not good 
Oh, <laughs> um, but Morgan, I do feel the energy. I want to say because for me this week, it manifested in a different way, which has felt, first of all, like, I had an attitude about eight minutes ago before I got on this call. Like every single day, I feel like the universe or the world has forced me to say, are you trying to play me to somebody? Like in just a way, like various people of various situations of just all sorts, (laughs) shapes and sizes. But every single day, it seemed to be one situation where I just be like, I don't want to choose violence. But I got to say (laughs) the thing that's advocating for me or that makes me, and it has felt like, you know, that's not necessarily my seeds, but I was like, this new season of growth is also saying like, I don't want it to feel edgy, which is how it kind of feels now. And I think that's that kind of like new moon energy when you're transitioning into things. But I do want to be like, well, that's also a season that's calling me to something different and I just like I've just noticed it every single day and I'm like I don't want to have an attitude though but I do want to say what I gotta say so I'm trying to figure out how to adjust my spirit because I had I had an attitude but then that's why I was just like thank god for this walk and talk put my feet uh, in the sun and then play this Nina Simone and have a reset and then I just feel so good so yeah I had saw Instagram mean. I was trying to look at it while you were talking because it's exactly <laughs> this. It's exactly this. Oh. It's like, how do you know like when to let go and how do you know when to say to, to let go? Or like, how do you know when to like relax and let it go? And how do you know when to let go? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what are your boundaries? Yeah. What are your boundaries? Like, what, you know, and it's like, you know, we're, listen, we're trying to move away from that fight or flight trauma mode or freeze yeah. or fawn. Um, you know, and I, and part of it is like, it's just the ability to watch and be detached from the situation while you see all this stuff, just making it, I mean, where it's almost funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Not a, yeah. You're just like, yeah. Oh, there you go. Devil, you tried to check me again. <laughs> you tried to check me again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, no, you know, like, I know, I know what that feels like. Me. It's like every single day. But um, I'm proud of you. You've been doing such a good mm-hmm. job in your life. I'm just very proud of you. Oh, thank you. I'm As proud your of big you sister. Thank yeah. you. No, thank I'm you. proud. And and I I think this is a no. You say what you're gonna say. No, I was just gonna say as your big sister of seven months. I think I'm so <laughs> I feel I very know. proud of you. Like I done led you in the right oh, direction. <laughs> And I feel young as hell too, y'all. I'm about to be 46, but I feel young as hell. Like I do feel like a little sister, like yeah. Now listen, we're um, looking good. I was just, I was just telling Ty in the car that before we went on the Today Show, I had went to get my um lashes done, I think. And the lady was like, "You can't go on TV looking like this." And I was like, "What you mean?" She said, "You need some Botox here, 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 here." And I said, "I'm gonna take my chances looking 46." yeah no I would sound myself every day I'd be like dang if I had known I was gonna look this when I was like 17 <laughs> if I known I was gonna look this good I would have slowed life down altogether. you see at 17 <laughs> you don't know so I was trying to fit it all in y'all because I just didn't understand that I was gonna preserve so great so it's just <laughs> That's why my young older self would tell my younger self. <laughs> no, I had on this strapless, like free to people dress today. You could tell me that. You know, I oh, went yeah. out to <laughs> breakfast. I was looking good. But I literally thought that I was like, I got about 20 more years of sexy. <laughs> yeah. Years exactly. So, so I got about 20 more years of fun. Oh, you got oh, it. Oh, we'll that'll be fine. We're going to be fine until we ascend. Okay, that's well, we first be of all, let's right. stop and pause and give all of our gratitude to Grandma Nan, who I just saw her memorial yes. was 100 years old when she was still fine. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Still laughing, still having me since stitches when I saw her, still wishing us prayers on videos, still raising them kids and grandkids and great grandkids. That woman was a force. She was the mother of our movement and we lost her this week and it doesn't even feel sad. That's what I'm saying. And 
like shout out to the work she did raising a generation of people, of humans, of good workers and activists, including all of us, not just her, her children, which I think she has eight children. God forgive six. me if I got that number yeah, wrong. Six. Is it six? Yeah, six. Yeah, yeah six, six, six. but she yeah. has thousands of children. So Grandma Nan in Philadelphia um, ascended and is now on the other side, as Alice Coltrane's daughter said, advising us, keeping us on the right path. And I just um, am grateful for her life. I'm grateful for I her life. Her too. daughter Faye just posted. And I was like, can I read it out to you? I have it up. Yes. I, did, I was hoping we were going to talk about her because one is so beautifully written, and two, these nuggets in here, I want to ask you which of these do you think is most important? Because I was like, this is the blueprint right here. So thank you, Faye. We got a. This is the blueprint, but um, so our one of our checkers, Bay Page Edwards, she wrote this about uh, Grandma Nan. After nearly 101 years of modeling how to keep bouncing back to your best life, my mother has gone to be with her ancestors. I have six siblings, but many call her mom. She was everyone's favorite, known for her wit and wisdom. Here are a few nuggets. Trust in the Lord. God don't like ugly. More is caught than taught. A hard head makes for a soft behind. Once on the lips, forever on the hips. Sit like a lady. The kitchen is closed. To have a friend, be a friend. Treat any place that you rent like you own it. It's your home. If you send a crowd gathering and you don't know why, go. if you see a crowd gathering and you don't know why, go the other way. Keep the faith, trust, and obey. And then she said, there are 31 chapters in the Old Testament book of Proverbs. Read and heed one every day. And her favorite mealtime blessing is Psalm 104, 14, and 15. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengthen man's heart. I read that last scripture and I was like, I think God wants me to start smoking weed. <laughs> what? What is the scripture to see on that? How? What? It says God made the herb for man oh, and he did. made the wine for good time. I thought about garlic butter, but I didn't think about weed. But you're right. <laughs> and he said oil, your oil for your face. I was like, God must love around the way, girls. That's all I'm saying because we like the wine, right. so we did the oil. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and I, I was just oiling my scalp this morning. It felt so good. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, I. Um, speaking of, I um, love the one that I love the quote that said, "What is this?" So one of them about um, it's easier to, or caught taught. What was that one? Yes, the more is taught than taught. More is caught than taught. What See, Miss Martha means? told me that. Miss Martha told me that. Miss Martha told Miss Martha's a famous cook. Um, Mrs. Rosa Parks cook down in Montgomery. She told me that she was like, you need a little, put a little sugar on it, Morgan. Put a little sugar on it. You just can't say it to him like that. <laughs> you know, put sugar on it. More is caught than taught, I think, is just like, almost like model the mission or like be attractive. Don't try to be oh, controlling. Oh, I get it now. That's so good. Yes. Like, so demonstrate it. Basically, you'll get yes. what you want. Versus trying to yes. tell people, or okay, I like that. Yes, like that. yes, like that. attract it, don't like instruct it. Yeah, more is caught than taught. I really like that one. And then I liked, um, if you want a friend, be a friend. I've been really like working that on that too. in my life. Yeah, because I really, I'm in a season of my life where some of you may have saw on Instagram, I just put an offer down on a house in South Carolina. I'm feeling Woo-hoo! breezy. I'm feeling rooted. <laughs> but now I have the first time really in my adult life where I get to curate my community. And like, if you want a friend, be a friend. I have to start being friends with this very well-established community and like start a book club or do the things that I want to do because I don't actually want to experience loneliness. I want to experience vibrance and community. Y'all, I'm walking. It's hot out here. I'm walking hard. But um, I want to experience vibrance, you know. So I have 
two lunch dates next week, one with Mahogany, who you know, the singer, uh, yeah. um, and one, <laughs> one with this amazing woman named Alana, who's doing some like powerful stuff here on the island, and I can't wait to support her. Um, and they're just kind of like friend dates, and you know, so I'm excited about like getting to know know people. <laughs> So that feels good. I like that. Yeah. No, that actually reminds me of what the uh, my favorite nugget from Grandma Nan was, was actually the one where she says, treat any place that you rent like you own it. It's your home. I loved it because yeah. it was practical advice. And like, that's why I was like, explain the other one to me. But this one I get <laughs> on a practice on a practical level, which is like one, like we, not all of us may be in a position in, to be homeowners in the moment. Yeah. But I think everybody is in a position and deserves to have a home. And like, yeah. how do we like curate those spaces? And just like, I think it's really powerful. And it also speaks to me even bigger, more than the space or the physical spaces that we rent. But like your home is in like what you're saying, like build community, make connection, invest, like, you know, build roots. Like you can't, we can't be transient people. You, we can't just come and um, get for the moment. And I think it's like one of the things that we all reminisce on in a nostalgic way about like our parents or grandparents generations of like all the cousins who was together, all the this, all the that. But that stuff was intentional. <laughs> I see but what you were just saying. I was like, this is so powerful. Because as soon as you said that about... Um, like home is wherever you are. And then I was like, oh my God, do you hear that? That's the sound of summer, summer ending. Because mm. I remember growing up in Mississippi at my grandma Virgie's house and these cicadas. Yes, and the wind that is what's happening right trees. now here in DC. And the wind, that's exactly how it sounds right where I'm at right now. That's exactly and how it sounds. Trees, like tickling my back, all of it feel, I just, I got transported back to my grandmother's house before you started talking about being at your grandmother's house. That's why I was like, uh, Vanessa, this is so powerful. It feels it and sounds like the soundtrack of home and going back home to the South. So I was like, maybe I could just be quiet so people who are in urban environments can remember. It's fascinating because um, our friend of friend of Girl Trek, the show, and my next door neighbor, Pasama, who I hope she's listening right now. Hey, P. Um, she's the next door in Hurston. That's all you need to know. Um, yeah, and I don't know. I see that. Yeah, she's an anthropologist. She's so diligent and beautiful and kind and just just brilliant. And she moved here to the Gullah Sea Islands and is interviewing all of the elders, the fishermen and the boat makers and the net makers. And she's just as powerful. And so she asked if she could interview interview my boyfriend. And he was like, of course. And he's like one of the youngest people that she's interviewed. Um, and she was, I was sitting next to him while he was getting interviewed. And she said, um, she said, well, what do you think about like the land here and the developers? And he said, I don't even believe in owning land. He said, I don't, I don't believe it's possible to own the land. And he was like, and no one here does. And so what you're talking about, about like, wherever you go, there you are, wherever you go, even if you're renting and don't need to call yourself the king of this domain or the owner or the, you know, <laughs> that you still yeah. treat it with loving kindness. You still treat it with balance and equanimity. You still treat it with all of the godlike qualities that you would do, even if it weren't yours, you know? Um, and what the fascinating part about it is that almost every home I knew nobody owned. Like my grandmother was still renting yeah. her house when she passed. She didn't yeah. own her house. My grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't own it. Yeah. That's why I said to me, I'm proud of you for what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Well, y'all, this is a new season and some of you have done limped across the finish line. I know. I know what that feels mm -hmm. like. I know somebody done, done tried you just, it's, it's somebody beeping in on the other line now while you're trying to walk. Like, I know what it feels like, y'all. And I'm telling you, I was um, on the gram today and I heard this affirmation that I've actually practiced something like this before. This um, sister in Ghana was doing this and it was really helpful. We were going through a lot of stuff with our team and stuff. And that's this just kind of calling your energy back. And I wanted yeah. to play it a little bit before we open the lines. But is there a question mm -hmm. for today that you wanted to explore, V? Because I want to encourage people to queue up on the lines yeah. while we're playing this. Yeah. 
I have both a question and I have a challenge actually. <clears throat> okay. So my question was for you. Well, I'll, my question is there's still some days left in summer. And yeah. as we are transitioning, was there something that you really wanted to do and can you call it in before the end of summer? I have, that's the question I have for you. Can you call something in to think about it? But I have a challenge, Morgan. So mm -hmm. I've really been on my walking game. I'm proud of myself, y'all. Uh, today is day 13 in a row for me. It feels like a victory every single day. I've been intentional about just getting my 30 minutes in, and it hasn't always felt like grand, but it has felt like good for me um, physically, mentally, and just something with integrity that I know mo both Morgan and I and our entire team, it matters to us that we're like really doing the work. So I feel like good when I'm on track, so I feel good. Then I calculated, Morgan, that today there's 21 more days left in summer. <laughs> September 23rd is the last day of summer. Oh, so then I was awesome. like, can, I'm gonna go for the next 21 days for sure walking. And I was Yay. like, I'm gonna invite you to walk for the next 21 days because Yay. in the summer. And I was like, whoever is on this call with us, it's an invitation that we ask women to walk 21 days in 30. So you usually don't have to do it in a row to earn your golden shoelaces. But those of you who haven't earned your laces or who are just looking to like root back into your habit or who just like the idea of like extrinsic motivation, like there's 20 more and more days left in summer. I'm going to walk them out and I'm going to share um, my walk into my Instagram. Oh, I'm in. I'm in. Thank you for the challenge. Walk on out these last 21 days of summer, I'm in. I think it's a great idea. I think yeah. it's a great idea. And you know, my sister and I said we were going to walk 300 days by the end of the year. We was on the phone carrying the one, divide by three. We were on the phone like, can we make it? Can we make it? We have decided that we can make it. But I tell you, walking 21 days in a row is going to get me very far for that oh, longer no. term goal because we're right hovering around 200 days and we're going to have to get that last 100 days in by the end of the year. So I'm excited by taking your challenge. I will also post on Instagram for the next 21 days. I appreciate it. Can you um, hashtag I, Morgan 21 days of summer? Hashtag girl yes. tech so that I can yes. follow along. And if you're out there, y'all, can you hashtag 21 days of summer and then hashtag girl tech use it. both the hashtag just so that we can know that you also say, yes, I'm in for these 21 days. Listen, it might be 17 of us. It might be 1,700 <laughs> of us. Right. Hashtag 21 days of summer. Maybe invite somebody else to do it in your, um, in your friend yes. group or in your neighborhood to do the last 21 days of summer. I think that would be really nice. Hold on, my neighbors are checking on me. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you doing? What's your name? Morgan, how are you? Morgan. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. What's so your... cute. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from, all... I'm, I'm on a work call right now, but I'm doing all right. Oh, yes. Who are your people? Yes. Who are my people? I'm over there with Mr. Ra and Mr. Bill. You don't know over there around the corner? Denise? No, 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 around this corner right here. Sorry, y'all, I got to be your friend. Y'all, well. listen, this, this, is real, this is really happening. Trust me, they want to hear as much as I do. Yeah, yeah, so if you go down this dirt road right here, there's a brick house on the left. I've been staying there with my old man. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. How y'all doing today? Where you live? Uh, on Tomega Face, so we're at the shop. Yeah, we're at the shop. Oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm just walking down the road. But all is well. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes, be well. Okay. All right, bye. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he sounded so cute. He was like, who is your people? <laughs> it was two of them. <laughs> Speaking of that's, community, uh, like that's, that's it, important no. gatekeeping. No, no, that's, it's the number one question everybody asks here is who is your people? And I was just yeah. like, it is such an African beautiful thing. It really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's so close to Ghana here. The culture is so close and it's so beautiful. Mm. But yeah, those were two men and they were, you know, I had to throw in that old man so they could just know. <laughs> like you also, that's also it. Like it was also yeah. polite hitting on. Yeah. Um, yeah. 21 oh, days that man sounded like 80. How old was he? <laughs> no, no, no. They weren't 80. They were like, oh. they was like maybe, they was like 45, 50. It was two guys. Oh, oh, okay. I was reading the situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
No, they were nice. Yeah, so yes, yeah, let's let everyone know. We do want to make some space as we close out this last Sisterhood Saturday call to hear from women. If you have a testimony, if you have a word of encouragement, if you need some advice or some support, if you just want to offer anything to the community, now is your time. We welcome new star voices nine. into this space, especially star nine, raise your hand, star nine, raise your hand, and then yes. uh, uh, we'll bring okay. you on. Yeah. Star nine to raise your hand for all of those things. A testimony, that's great. Vanessa, if you need help or need advice, that's great. And then what was your prompt? One thing you want to get done by the end of the summer? I had a prompt. Um, I saw something. I saw an affirmation yeah. that says, I release what I cannot control. And I was wow. like, whoa. And I was just thinking, what are you releasing? And what can't you control? <laughs> like, that's such a good question. Because uh, control is. has been um, something I've been really just trying to let go of. Um, and yeah. so I wonder what, for the people yeah. listening, what can't yeah. you control that you are ready to release now? What can't you control in your life that you are ready to release now? <laughs> what can't you control in your life that you are ready to surrender, to release now? Yeah, Ooh, I Vanessa. can't control what happened in the past with me and my mother and I release that now and have been working on releasing and just not on this call but just in this current season I have been working on really releasing it because I don't want to hold any sort of blame that manifests in her body as sadness and I believe there is a, a connection there when they say like the forgiveness is for you and not the person. Like I'm releasing it from my own physical body because I want to release it from her. Oh, Ashe. So like that needs some space. That is powerful. <sighs> We're only just learning and just tapping into like what our healing powers are. And I don't, always be knowing and yet somehow I do be knowing you know what I'm saying Morgan like and I think all yeah. of us out there know I think we have like uh, when we allow ourselves more space when we allow ourselves more stillness when we give ourselves permission which means pushing past our fear to like trust ourselves I think we have like an intuitiveness that we're able to tap into that tells mm -hmm. us like what to do and how to do things, but it's just like hard to stay connected to that. And I think like those are the healing things that I've been like trying to like, like the things that have been working for me are the things that I've been accessing when I'm like still and like just intuitively asking myself what I need and like giving myself what I need. And that's where I've been like the stuff around my mom has been coming up. Uh, the great Melba Moore posted today. God is oh, I love Melba Moore. I do too. She said, God isn't asking you to figure it out, Vanessa. He's asking you to trust that he already has. And so part of this is like, yeah. it's already done. The healing and the forgiveness with your mom is already done, you know, and it's, yeah. it really is a, a letting go and a releasing of that control. So I'm proud of you. For me, it's similar to um, yours, but maybe different in many ways. It's, I am letting, I am, I don't, I cannot control love and particularly romantic love. And my mommy had um, just such a go at it with like trying to cling to romance and trying to yeah. like have this, you know, my mom is cute and she's, but she's shy and she's nervous and she has anxiety in many ways. And it just manifested in clinging to like, to what felt good, you know what I mean? And like, I don't believe romance can work that way. And she just, I just didn't, I never wanted to be alone. And my mom yeah. right now, she has like a powerful church family. She has these beautiful kids who love her, which is something I don't have, right? I don't have any kids. Right. So I just like deepen the recesses of my mind and like trying to battle against like this, like this destiny of being alone. You understand yeah. what I mean? Like, I just don't yeah. want that for myself. I want to be, nestled up you know as a senior citizen yeah. I want to be holding hands on and that's brave chair. to say it it's brave to say it I yeah. want to say that like it's brave to even say it and to stand on it for so many reasons that we don't even need to unpack yeah and I particularly like 
am releasing the need to control. Like I am in absolute love and awe of black men. And um, part of, you know, why I came back to America is because I fell in love with a black man. And, you know, there are 20 million people in Ghana, half of them black men, and they all wonderful and beautiful. And I had such a beautiful time and felt so healed by that. But there is something about the mirror experience of the black male experience in America that I think is necessary for me to truly heal from generational trauma. Here, it is like the key for me. And I think the key for him, whoever him is, and I think I know who him is. <laughs> like, and, but I'm releasing the need to control what happens. And I'm, or yeah. him, by the way, like he, he listen, Get yourself a man who can't be controlled, actually. <laughs> I mean, like, that's actually yeah. gonna be where the healing starts. And, like, yeah. I, um, and I'm just so grateful. I'm grateful for it. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. what I'm releasing the need to try to control love and maybe just watch it happen and, uh, and be enamored by it and the greatness of what it's gonna be and what it already is. And mostly, yeah practice loving myself as cliche as that sounds so that you said this yesterday Vanessa you were like I want to get to a point where all this little stuff just be little because I got so much other stuff going on and you were talking about something completely different but I oh, like not to say I said that you did you was like um hmm. we was talking about somebody at work and you was okay, like yeah, yeah but when you got all this other stuff going on this little stuff ain't either gonna bother you yeah, I don't I okay, remember what, yeah, you yeah. were talking about it with somebody else but I think in the in the context of love if you have so much stuff going on in your own life so much worship and praise so much adoration you know at the color purple so much stop listen and be radically present so much stillness calmness turned upness tuned inness like you are fully alive in your body to where everything else is an addition yeah. including romance and like you can want it desire it see it in your life and when it comes it feels additive and it doesn't feel like you are clinging to it or like holding so tight yeah holding so tight to it anytime you feel like you're holding so tight to something you should let it go yes that's so true your job, if you just cling into your job, any you sh that one of the um is it the Bhagavad Gita? No, the Yoga Sutra. The Yoga Sutra, one of the eight uh, limbs or I was just thinking yoga when life. you said that. I was like the physical. I for some reason I thought of the physical release of yoga when you said that. I was like create space. Yeah, it body. says it says do not cling to life, and I could not understand it. I was just like, who wouldn't cling to life? When I was like twenty reading this, I was like, that's ignorant. I hate this. But uh, it's right. <laughs> like you can't cling to you can't cling to anything. Yeah, you, can't. you really you have can't. to let go and and release it. Yeah. And then that's the thing. In if you ever practice yoga, what you're saying, the physicality of that is as soon as you try to concretize into some kind of stoic posture or pose, or you're just gonna fall. You can't even find balance in that kind of tightness mm -hmm. in that holding. Mm -hmm. You don't hold the pose. You just you have to find lift and groundedness and fluidity and soft and power. You have to find the kind of energy that allows you to flow from one pose to the next pose um, and move with your breath. And that is the human experience. That is the yeah. human experience. I'm watching these butterflies dance around each other. They are moving with their breath. They are moving, they are moving with their instinct. That is a human experience. So, so it's kind of nice that you started the call this way. Look at you. You just yeah. set the tone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we right. have Do a have lot of uh, hands raised. Yeah, we have. Hopefully, y'all okay. held on because we had a little bit more conversation in us. But yes, Tyreen said lots of hands are raised. Tyreen, you could cue some up right up somebody up right now and bring them on and come bring them off mute. While she's doing that, Morgan, I looked it up. Melba Moore is 77 years old. That's what that's what I mean when I say we still gonna be fine for a long time. Because Melba Moore still be serving. So like I follow her on she's Instagram so and like she's so yeah. vibrant. Yeah, I love her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hello, hello. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
Hi, my name is Chandra. Hi, Chandra. Hi. Um, you know, I was listening to you guys, you know, talk about, you know, what you're releasing. And one of the things I am also releasing are things dealing with my mother, but I'm also dealing with things, releasing things from my um, estranged relationship with my siblings. Um, and yeah, that was one. due to my mother's death. So, um, you know, lots of things there, but just also releasing things in life, you know, because, we, you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, we go through these things in life and, you know, you don't want to enter into anything new, you know, unless if you're a whole person, no matter whether it's a relationship, whether it's a new job. Um, for me, it's, it's also new employment possibly. Um, and, you know, but just being able to embrace the life that you have and, and be ready for new opportunities when they arise, because, you know, God provides us with new opportunities daily and we have to be present in the moment in order to recognize his beauty. A word and a mic drop. Let's be present in the moment. Let's start to collect these gems from this last walk together. Thank you so much, sister, for that. And healing yeah. from sibling trauma is like real, y'all. <laughs> it's like, whoa, there's some stuff out there. Siblings, cousins, like our peers, coworkers, our friends, that whole like domain of relationship that sometimes turns into competition, sometimes turns into jealousy, sometimes turns into rage, y'all. So like, let's release it now, Ashe, release. Thank you, sister. Is there another caller on the line? Hi, this is Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Hi, um, I am walking, so my apologies for the wind. But where are you um, walking at? Tell us where you're walking at when y'all call in too. I yes. love to know all the cities represented. I am in the DMV. I'm in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Okay. What's up? And I want to encourage folks to do the things and the stuff. Sometimes we, you know, we let life, we let sometimes the finances, we let fears, but we let things and people discourage us from doing the things and the, and the stuff. Uh, Last year, I think I called you all, picked up the call, and I told you all about my girlfriend and her son who had both passed away from COVID. And you all did an amazing prayer for me. And as if that was not enough, last year, my father also died from COVID. And what I learned from that experience, because with all of them, I was left to handle all of the stuff that happens when people pass away, right? I, after my dad, I just said, you know what? Um, life is not promised, and all these things that you want to do, do it. And so this summer, you, talk, you all talked about this summer. I went to Greece. I went to Paris. I Come went on, to Cayman Islands. Come on, Come Come on. on. I went to I went to Cayman Islands. I went to San Listen. Diego. If somebody called me, and said, hey, you want to? I said yes. And when I tell you, I had the best summer of my entire 53 years of my life this summer. I had the best oh, summer yeah. of my life. I did, what's the thing? I did parachuting. I did parachuting. I did, I swam with the stingrays. Like, I just did it. I was afraid, <laughs> and I did it anyway. Yeah. So I just yes, want to encourage folks, it. like, life is, life is going to life. It's going to do what it's going to do. But yes, yes. I encourage folks to, do, to just keep living. Keep living. Yes. yes. Ooh, thank you for that, that encouragement. Yes, I love that. every single thing you listed. Thank you. Thank you. We better stop identifying with struggle. There's so many adventures you can have right now, but we so we so scared that we're going to look like we're going to that we're going to look like and we addicted to struggle we addicted to it too i'm telling y'all some of y'all got a chemical imbalance i'm letting y'all know because i'm going through it so get your numbers checked because <laughs> your body really might even be addicted to that struggle y'all it's deep and we gotta let it the toxins go and we gotta balance ourselves 
so that we even desire because desire is the root of manifestation and calling what you want but you have to really want the good things around you and you have to really want things to change and we can't commiserate as uh tony came by our reminders and the pleasure principles around some of this energy that be holding us back so just be remain vigilant is my advice to all of you out there around your own energetic vibration. And when you and find replace yourself, some of those, yes. sorry, the, Go the ahead. chemicals that you talked about being addicted to, you can also replace them with serotonin and with rest or replace them with um, adrenaline, which is the, you know. And the, pee them out the with water by drinking water. <laughs> yes. You can have, you can have other like chemical experiences that are not, struggle or fight or flight um and desire being a brave thing to those who have lived their life and struggle is just something to be to just behold like how do i cultivate desire in my life i want blank i want blank and start saying it over and over to yourself in your quietest voice in your smallest voice i want blank just fill it in and start to feel desire trickle back into your body if you don't have it anymore because you're tired just start saying what you want don't complain ask for what you want so you, vanessa we were just saying this we we walked in front we went crabbing this morning again we walked in and over on the dock next to us there are these people who came in for labor day and they there's a house back there and ain't nobody never in the house. We were just talking to talk about the house. They would get a house to the community, but these people don't came for their vacation house. They got their kids. They out there kayaking, frolicking in the Creek, but we trying to crab. <laughs> it's just like they're having a blast. Okay. They are having a blast. And meanwhile, everybody else on the island is struggling and they've got the most beautiful canals back here. And so, you know, it's like, well, we're going to get the kayak. We're going to get the free time. You got the free time. Your yeah. friends ain't got the free time. You understand yeah. what I mean? And so it's like, yeah. we got to rebuke that, that, um, that, that work to work to work that late, that you're yes, only working at labor. We have to rebuke it. And we have to, we have to play hard. I mean, that sister just called in and said she went to 15 places this summer. I literally, <laughs> I was called. convicted. I was like, I got to get it like, together. Step it up. I'm just trying to figure out if I could go on a hike this weekend. This lady is <laughs> like, ma'am. <laughs> oh, my gilly. Oh, my goodness. That's so good. Do we have time for another caller or two? That was yeah, great. let's take two more let's, if, they, if we have them. Here go one of these people Hello. right now coming on a golf cart. Oh my god. Hi, how are you? <laughs> you there? Hello. Hello. Yes. You're on. What's your name? Hello? Where are you calling from? Yes, ma'am. Where are you calling from? What's your name? This is Phyllis from Jackson, Mississippi. Hi, Phyllis from Jackson, Mississippi. What you got going on? Well, I've been listening to y'all for a long time, the first time on the phone. But y'all are great, and uh, what you're talking uh -huh. about, I need to hear the uh, what I want. I don't necessarily know what I want, but I, you know, my desires are not really open to me right now. But I know I need to live, which is different from a year ago uh, when I was in a deep depression. And uh, but God is good. Yes, He is. So, uh, oh, you almost made me shout. Miss yes. Phyllis from Jackson, you just almost made me shout on this phone. Said, I don't really know what yes, I want you. now, but I know I want to live because this time last year I was in a deep depression. That's a testimony from the old school, and it's good, good, good. You make me want to run, sister. I'm telling you, that is the beginning, just an appetite to want to live. We keep yeah. talking about we want to increase the life expectancy of black women by 10 years and 10 years, but the first step is to want to live. And I know what it feels like not to want to. And you do too. So I'm telling you, that is such a brave thing to let roll off your tongue. And I'm so proud of you for doing this work. What do you think you have done different in this last year? Um, really, un unfortunately, uh, this is a cycle. And it's happened to me before, over and over again. And uh, what 
I haven't really the cycle's broken. God, the cycle's broken. Yeah. The cycle's Thank broken. You. you don't even speak that over yourself. The cycle is broken. You keep God on walking in the direction of life. Yes. Yes. I I I, I have something that I, I need to do for God. He always calls me back. So, uh, it's just it's just amazing uh how much he loves me, you know, to call me back in those times when I fall short listening to the other voice as opposed to him. But he always calls me back. He's, he's well amazing God. He is an amazing God, and you turn down that fear voice. What is the love voice? Like, what do you love to do? When you say you're calling, what do you love to do? I love to teach. I'm a a mathematician, and I love to teach. Okay, so that's your calling, yeah? So you love to teach. So are you teaching now? Uh, Not right at this moment, but I will be in the next week. Excellent. Excellent. So you want to teach again, and it looks like you're aligning yourself up with that opportunity to teach again. Have you ever heard of um, Septima Clark? There's a woman named Septima Clark. Mm -hmm. I want you to Google her. I want you to Google her and read her Wikipedia, just like the month September it is now, Septima Clark, because we because we created <laughs> our name, Septima <laughs> Clark. I want, you to, I want you to read about her because she changed everything okay. and she was a teacher and she changed everything. And she stopped teaching in the classrooms and she started teaching on farms and she started teaching people okay. how to read and write so they could vote. And I'm telling you, there's so much you can do with your love for teaching other people. And I cannot, and particularly in Mississippi, and I cannot wait for you to align with that calling. I mean, fully align. Let yourself really be in love, in alignment with what you love. Be in it. Yeah. Fully allow yourself to be there. Oh, I'm so glad you called in. That's what you think. I, um, I, was, <laughs> I was thinking about the conversation we had this week around us infusing God into girl truck and like <laughs> how you know it's just hard to it's just hard to separate it because the the women in the community we serve have their own testimonies and so I'm just grateful that we have an authentic place where women can express whatever faith belief they have and also that it's a space where even if the only thing you believe in is yourself or this sisterhood you're still welcome because that's what this summer has been about radical welcome so I was thinking about that and I was just Thanking God, Phyllis, that you want to live. I also think that it's the origin of all things. And I hope that we can spark that desire in all of the women who are on this call for us to just get after it and stay after it and be enraptured, like you said, Morgan. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that whole rapture thing. What Vanessa was talking about is one of our dear supporters. Um, at, she said, I've noticed you've been talking about God more. Is that on purpose? Or like, do you think that's a good strategy? And we was like, Listen, they're trying to kill us out here. <laughs> what are you talking about? You just like this is, and like, don't be fooled when people talk about black culture. You also talking about the black church. The black church was the number one culture maker for 400 years, and so like we can't just on some liberal agenda, like try to pretend like that's not the case. And she wasn't she wasn't suggesting or recommending that. No, she was asking no. an actual legitimate question. But I think we sometimes be too shy. You know what I mean? We like we're starting yeah. a revolution, but that revolution has to be based in our culture, it has to be based in yeah. our belief system, and for me, it has to be based in calling, and and my yeah. calling comes from God, and so and it also has to be based in what's authentic. And me and Vanessa are yeah. having an authentic experience with God right now, and so that ain't for everybody. Yeah, that ain't for everybody. But I ain't ashamed. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff out there for you. If it, yeah. if you there's a lot of other stuff out there for you. And so um, yes. I want to create a space where Miss Phyllis says, you know, that God gave her the desire to live again. That's I want to create that space. And that don't mean you ain't yeah. Buddhist because I'm Buddhist too. <laughs> exactly. I'm not Buddhist. Am, am I, I just told me off about these crystals over here, but I was like, <laughs> off, lady. 
Back off. Oh okay. God, so I laughed so hard in my life. Vanessa said her auntie got mad at her for having some crystals, but then she gave her a pack of short ribs. She saw no irony. <laughs> she so hard. You have me so tickled. All right. Let's take one more call. Okay. I'm so glad we took okay. that call. Yeah. Me too. Good afternoon, ladies. Morgan, Vanessa. So good to be Hi. on the line today. My name Hi. is Elizabeth. Hi. My name is Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. And I'm in the boogie, and I'm in the Bronx, the boogie down Bronx in New York City, taking my walk Hi. and listening to you, ladies. I have been so oh, just you guys have done such a great job since I started listening to Girl Track during the pandemic. You brought me through so much depression as a young lady before me. Uh, recently lost my husband and just these walks they have brought me back to reality they have given me a little new step in my peps you know to get up and go and tell other women about girl trek which I have been doing all the time that I've been walking but I'm, I'm a single walker because most of the ladies in my tribe they lazy <laughs> But I tell them to get up and walk this 30 minutes. It does such a refreshing thing for me. I'm 66 years old, and I've been walking with you guys, and I've been loving every minute. I love the Lord. I am a teacher in the gospel, and I'm just so glad to be on the line with you today. Thank you for continual healing for all of us women. Um, you heal me every time I'm on the line. You don't know if there's times when I'm broken, and I'm taking your walk. And it just makes me up. Thank you. Thank you. You don't even know what you do. I don't know how many women are listening. But I know I am. And you have given me such a go-getting spirit to get up and take that 30-minute walk. Even on my worst day, I take that walk because I'm reminded that I'm his child. I'm his daughter, you know, and he loves me. And he's given me the strength to continue. And when I would hear... You say you're in Africa, and then she's in Maryland, and you guys are all over now in South Carolina. And knowing that you're still carrying this this torch for the women, I'm just I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. I'm speechless. But I thank you for everything that you're doing. Let's continue. I'm in this 21 day walk for the end of the to the end yeah. of the summer, getting my groove on, getting my steps. I've lost about 20 pounds. <laughs> In this walk experience over the last two years. Um, and I'm in better shape than I've been in a long time. So thank you, ladies. Thank you. Continue to keep the tribes moving. I'm going to continue to tell others to come and join me. And I try to get them out. I have one or two that will follow. But uh, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Morgan. You're doing a marvelous job. If no one else tells you, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm elated every time I get on this line and I hear what you guys pour into us into me it just gives me more hope to continue with this struggle that we're in thank you ladies god bless you oh, oh god Elizabeth. bless you too yeah. <laughs> oh i feel overwhelmed i feel speechless it feels just thank you for thank you for every single thing that you said and thank you genuinely like every single time we get on one of these calls i'm nervous that ain't nobody gonna join us on the line and every single time we send an email out i'm worried that like does the message get there are the women getting what they need like every single day morgan and i our entire team there's so many people who are just like working alongside morgan and i and we are working so hard to just figure out like what our strategies are and like how does our brand resonate and like how do we stay authentic and it just means everything elizabeth that for you to say it's working for you for me that means like it's working so thank you i was just trying to google the word elated elizabeth said i am elated <laughs> and i was like there's something about it that feels so right elated on. elizabeth elated. that's her superhero name that's your superhero name it's so good Y'all, if you don't have a superhero name, you just pick a word that starts with the first letter of your name, and it's usually an adjective, but don't got to be. There ain't no rules, y'all. And uh, that becomes your superhero name. So Elizabeth can be elated Elizabeth. Um, I used to be Magnetic Mo. Now I'm Mo Money Mo. <laughs> I'm just bringing it in. I'm attracting it. I'm attracting it. <laughs> 
What's yours these days? What's your superhero name these days? V? I used to be Vicious V, but I've been more vivacious Vanessa. That's kind of where I'm, my energy, placing my chips. As we as we head into this ob- autumnal season, <laughs> vivacious <laughs> Vanessa. I like, I yeah. like vivacious. You are vivacious. I have an entire vivacious. list though. I did it one time as an exercise, and I have like thirty. Vibrant Vanessa, ba ba boom Vanessa, <laughs> very delicious <laughs> Vanessa. Yeah, I did like every name voluptuous <laughs> Vanessa. <laughs> like I just, I really did the exercise. It's fun, y'all. It's just y'all were there writing out all yours. Yeah. I was trying to do that. I was trying to do that because there's a lot of M words, so maybe I could just. It and is. I like that you just you went to some onomatopoeia. Is that what you call it? <laughs> <laughs> when, you go, when, you, when it ain't a word but a sound or something like that. <laughs> Correct me, teachers. Correct me, teachers, because it's definitely not onomatopoeia, but it felt like that. <laughs> See, alliteration. Maybe it's alliteration. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> well, it's a delight. It's been a delight this whole summer connecting with you all each month. I think we should make this an annual tradition, Vanessa, where we do sisterhood um, Saturdays over the summertime. Um, yeah, it's a nice, it allows some spaciousness, I think, for people to have your vacation, do your thing, and us to still connect, and us to remind ourselves that we still need to be out there. We're working up to the CDC recommended five days a week, 30 minutes a day. We give ourselves 30 minutes because we believe in radical self-care. And we establish a habit at Girl Trek by first taking one walk. That's how we're in the movement, five walks. So you can get your Girl Trek t-shirt in 21 walks so that you can get your laces. And then you try to maintain a baseline of 21 walks so you can just stay fly and fine and healthy. And alive. Stay fly, yes. Stay Melba. That's what you'll start to say. Stay yes. Melba. Stay Melba more. yes, for sure. Aww. Vanessa, I know you're good. you said you want to rest for your birthday. What do you want for your birthday? Yeah, it's well, it's a good question because I promise you, in deep gratitude, I have every single thing I need. Like I just have every single thing I can imagine, in every single way. So I just want like, well, this sounds crazy. I just want like want wellness and health for like my family, and I would like like a few days of just like alignment with good energy where there's just like no fires to put out no nothing and just like some relaxation like that's what I see for myself as I'm transitioning into my 46th year oh I love that I love it I love it all right well so be it so it is yes cheers to good health my and we won't be together for your birthday for the first time in a long time (laughs) but I'll see you then in a few days oh yeah 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 for the uh for that thing, the retreat. Mm-hmm. Y'all, listen, here, this is what you need to know, and then we're going we're gonna to close yeah. out. We had the first meeting with some people down in Montgomery, y'all. So, you know, we bought, we bought Dr. King's, or y'all bought Dr. King's house. I mean, office, that's ignorant. His office um, in the headquarters for the Montgomery Improvement Association, where the Montgomery bus boycotts were planned in this building that's about to be Girl Trek Southern headquarters. So we had our first meeting, y'all. There was all these people on the Zoom line. We thought we were just meeting with some of the tenants in the building, y'all. It was all these beautiful sisters and aunties and reverends all welcoming us, first of all. And then one of them started singing this little light of, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And she <laughs> talked about how her parents were in the Montgomery bus boycotts and how we have work to do and how grateful they are that Girl Trek is coming and how they have been praying for this and this is manifestation and that where there is no vision, the people will perish and how this collective action of a million black women is visionary and it is coming to Montgomery. I mean, it was the warmest welcome we could have ever imagined on Zoom yesterday. And me and Vanessa was just staring at the camera. Just dumbfounded. We had no words. We thought we were going to talk about like lock boxes and air conditioner units. No, we had no words for that kind of Southern welcome. And I am just grateful. I am just grateful for our community. I am grateful for our mothers' mothers who who taught us right how to welcome people. And I promise y'all, we're going to have some big events and stuff down there. And I can't wait to see every one of you. Next year, we are going to have events in our communities. And we want you to show up and show out. We want you to show up and show out. So 
I'm excited to tell you more. Um, I'm excited to tell you more. Vanessa and her team have been working overtime and we are excited to tell you more. So stay tuned. Um, coming up this fall, just so you know, is what, V? The prayer trek. Save the date went out yesterday. We're going to start on Sunday, October 15th and walk and pray for nine days through to the spirit. And that's going to lead us into some preparation and training for our Black Family 5K. So registration for everything will open September 22nd. I promise this. <laughs> I am doing a Black Family. I'm going to pull this stuff together with my you family or with my chosen family here in South Carolina. We doing that Black Family 5K. I'll be, looking, I'll be like never looking on Thanksgiving morning. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go out there. And y'all be I mean thousands of families be out there and I don't know doing the only time I did it is when Janine did it and invited me to hers. And that's ignorant. Oh that's my god, understand. that is that is, that is, that that is, is in my own is. spirit. That is a block yeah, in my own is. spirit. I'm doing that family fine. <laughs> You out there, maybe that sister who said that she's healing from she's healed mm -hmm. from her sibling stuff, all that stuff. Y'all do the blood here on Thanksgiving morning. Thanksgiving day, I mean, right after Thanksgiving dinner, or the Friday after, or the Saturday after, whatever works best for your family, get ready to do that Black Family 5K. Start sending out teasers now. Information going to come soon, but let them know now we're going to do a, a 5K at Thanksgiving this year, so start training. All right. I'm back at the house. All right, y'all. DJ, call. play us out with a little music as we say goodbye. We love you. Have a great, safe holiday weekend. No Monday motivation, y'all. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> goodbye. Tyreen thought I cut out, Vanessa, but I'm here. I was just quiet. I'm here. Good goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Vanessa, have a really wonderful birthday. I'm just mm -hmm. so grateful to have you as a friend. Bye, everyone.